everybody. Today we're learning all about stacked outdoors climbing sticks. You're not going to want to miss this one. Stay tuned. But first, please consider subscribing to the Relentless Sportsman channel. We have real, practical content that relates to everyday people looking for honest information. I'm here to help you succeed in the woods and on the water. Let's start off first with some specs. The size, the weight, and how high you can climb. I think that's really important when you consider sticks. And if you're considering these, I've got all the answers for you. So the total length of each stick is 21 inches. Consider that if you want to get high enough. And I'm six feet tall with boots on. So when I think about my designated hunting height in a tree, something to think about is that these aren't the longest stick in the world. The step distance between this bottom step of the stick and the top stick is 17 inches. So if you like to take big strides or if you've got longer legs, this might actually be a little bit too short for you. But for me, it seems to work out pretty well. The distance across each step from this point to this point is just over nine inches. I'd say about nine and an eighth, nine and a quarter. All right, let's talk weight. We're gonna weigh them just by themselves and with the strap. Once I put this on here, you might be surprised at the weight. It is a little heavier than I was hoping after purchasing it. I really didn't pay too much attention to it. And as you can see right here, 2.6 ounces. That's the stick without a strap. So why don't we put the strap on and see how much the weight is with one stick and one strap combined. All right, now that the strap is wrapped up and set on this scale, we are at two pounds and 13 ounces. So it did go up quite a bit just with adding that strap. So the strap itself weighs seven ounce. Add that with another strap, then another strap, and another strap. It's gonna add up pretty quick. So what we're gonna do now is weigh all four sticks plus the strap and the carrying strap that comes with them so you get a complete picture of how much the entire thing weighs in a package of four sticks, which is typical for you to purchase at the website. All right, so I've got it set at zero. I'm gonna set my sticks on with the strap you use to carry them in. Just that weight right there, we're at nine pounds, 14 ounces. This is the carrying strap, this green one, these black ones here are the individual straps for each stick. Put those on here, make sure they're all accounted for here. And as you can see, the weight is going up. We're at 11 pounds now. And yeah, we just made it to 11 pounds and 11 ounces. That's the complete package here. Four stick, four straps, one for each stick with the metal buckle and this green carrying strap as well. The sticks are also sold individually, which means if you want more than four sticks in the package, you can get five, six, seven, you can get as many as you want. I'd recommend at least four, but if you wanna get more to get extra height, go with five or six. It's not too much extra weight, especially on short distances from your vehicle to your stand location. Now I can tell you from experience, I don't even need to show you that with four sticks at six feet tall with boots on, I can get to 16 feet. Let's talk about how I carry these sticks into the woods, the best way that I found for myself, and this might come in handy for you as well. So mentioned earlier, we talked about how it comes with a carrying strap. At first, I didn't like that idea because I thought one strap going over my shoulder would be uncomfortable. It would kind of pinch me right here, and it wouldn't be a nice way to walk long distances to my stand. But then after adjusting the strap a little bit, making it longer rather than shorter, I don't really feel cut off in the chest spot up here or back, you know, kind of where the neck goes to the shoulder, right in this angle there. It doesn't actually hurt. It actually feels quite comfortable so my advice to you is keep the strap a little bit longer so the sticks rest along your lower back as you're walking and that's gonna free up some space too for a backpack you'd like to put a little bit higher I simply take them and go over like this put them across my body and I don't stop there of course you want to get comfortable and make sure that they're behind you like this and because of the way that they stack together so nicely hence the word stacked outdoors for the company they do stack really well back here. They're super quiet and they're gonna stay behind your back like this for the duration of your walk into your hunt. Now I used to have them really high on my back, like way up high, which means that I tighten this to keep them. I thought the tighter they are to my body, the less they're gonna move. But after a little bit of experimentation, walking in on several hunts so far this year, the lower the better. So I like to keep them lower just above my saddle right here because what that allows me to do is put a smaller backpack up here that
What you don't want to do, and I've seen them people do this, I've seen people do this in videos, don't put them like this on your shoulder and walk into your stand for a couple of reasons. One, they can slip off really easy. Two, when you're walking through brush, them being on the side right here, they're gonna hit everything. The idea of being mobile and quiet and being able to run and gun and go to certain locations is to keep your noise down. And when this is banging on everything you walk into the woods, it's not a good idea. Reason three, if you do keep them here and you want them to not slip off your shoulder, that requires one of your hands to be holding this the entire time. So one hand's on your bow, one hand's on the strap. You don't have any three hands to move brush. If you need to quickly draw your bow or shoot your gun or something, you might have to set these down first. That's more noise, that's more movement in case you see a deer as you're walking into your tree. So now that we talked about how to transport these from your vehicle to your tree you choose to hunt out of, let's talk about how to get up a tree and how to make that quiet and really efficient. So one thing I didn't mention is how you actually transport the straps. And the straps, I just carry in my pocket right here. I carry two in this pocket, two in this pocket. That makes it easier for putting the sticks on the tree as I ascend. And then when I'm coming down the tree, I just put them back in my pockets right here. I just basically take this off, lay it on the ground. The first stick is your most important stick. You wanna make sure that's the most secure at the perfect level, and that's gonna set the tone for the other sticks you put up in the tree. I like to put my first one at knee height. The problem with this is that they're gonna go down a little bit. Sticks, when you put your weight on them, they're gonna sink down maybe an inch or two. So I start a little higher. I lean up against the tree, take out one of my straps and go around the tree. Here's the thing you wanna remember. Do not, do not put the buckle end of the strap on the stick second. Put that one on first. I'll explain why in just a little bit. So once it's on the stick, you wanna take the other end of the strap and go around the tree. And if it's a big tree, you might have to sling it around. If it's a small tree, you can reach. I think it'll work. So you wanna have the buckle end first on the stick. There's a buckle and there's like four inches of strap. Make sure that's on the stick first. Secure it. And since this is the bottom stick, what I actually do, just to make sure the first one's really secure, I take this tag end here. I really crank on it tight. I take this tag end, place it down right here in the middle of the stick. That way it doesn't blow in the wind. All I do is I take that, push down it like that. You're gonna hear that little bit of friction right there. And this stick is ready to go. It's rock solid, doesn't move. It clings to the tree really well. That's a big advantage of these compared to other sticks out there on the market. And it's one solid piece that's not gonna go anywhere. Let me show you what I do with the other sticks. Now without any aiders, suaders, or naders, any other ropes, just using the sticks to ascend the tree, you get up to 16 feet. So how do I climb the tree with these sticks? Once you put them together and they fit like red solo cups, they're really, really tightly fitted together. How do you get up the tree? There's no way you can hold on to the ball and ascend up the tree with your lineman's rope. Well, I have an easy solution for that that many people probably do already. You can't click this onto a stand very well unless you've got some bungee cord thing and then you're messing around with that. So all I do is use gear ties. Got one on this side, rubber coated gear tie, and one on this side. Here, wrap it around. Same thing over here. I stick the gear tie in here and I keep them separate so they're not clanging into each other. Now that I have these two sticks tied to my sides like that, they're secure, they're quiet, they're not touched. I take my fourth stick that's on the ground currently and carry it freehand as I'm going up the tree. But I'm only going up on this top step. I'm not far off at all. I don't put my lineman's belt on until I'm on this step going to the second stick. And I do that because I want to keep my hand free and I'll show you what that looks like right now. Now that I'm on the top step of my first stick, I take my lineman's rope out of here, around the tree, connect it on this side, and I'm secure. I'm 100% safe, I'm tied to the tree. If I fell from here, I would literally fall from like three feet up, four feet up. Um, so that's why I wait to put this on. It's really hard to put this on and go up a tree while you're holding onto this stick. So that's just a little thing I do. Remember I told you I like to keep the distance between the sticks at knee height, but the stick is gonna move down a little bit once you step on it. So I put it just above knee height. I grab my other strap, just like before. This strap here with the buckle needs to go on first. If you do it the opposite way and put the strap loop end that doesn't have the buckle on it and you swing it around the tree, 
It's great because you have the weight to swing around the tree, but when that buckle comes around the tree and you don't catch it, this is what you're gonna hear. That's gonna happen when you're in the middle of the woods and that's one of the worst sounds you could possibly have. So keep that in mind. And so you take the side buckle, the loop, put it right here, swing the non-buckle end around the tree. You can reach it, reach it, attach it to the other side of the stick, pull it tight, as tight as you can. Hide the tag end again so it doesn't blow in the wind. Push it down. Now they're not going anywhere. It's solid, doesn't move. You've got a heavy duty strap with a heavy duty buckle, but it works. As you can see, it doesn't make noise, doesn't go anywhere. And then you're already up two sticks, about eight feet. Do they make noise? How about when you're stacking them back together at the end of a hunt, or you're taking them apart to go up the tree? Most of them do, but there's ways to get around that. Check it out. So you have a couple of options with these sticks. One, you can get felt strip. Two, you can set any other type of felt or quieting mechanism inside here. But this is what I recommend. Take your time. There is no reason why you need to make noise with sticks like this. Maybe other sticks, you can't avoid it. But with these sticks, being hard plastic, you can definitely, definitely do this quietly. And I'll show you what I mean right here. So I'm ending a hunt, got a stick on the ground. Obviously you wanna stack them the same way. If you take your time and set them down quietly, you're not gonna make a lot of noise. You might not even make any noise. You can easily set that on there without making a ruckus. So you can spend the money and put felt on there. You can check out the different connection points, but these fit together so well and so snug that they're not gonna make a lot of noise. They're not gonna wiggle around on you too much. Just put them on there slowly and you're just fine. So it's the end of the hunt, what do you do? You've obviously got your four sticks stacked on top of each other, five, six, however many you need. Your straps that go on each stick, packed away in a backpack, pocket. Now you need to attach the strap to carry all the stick. How does that work? Well, I've experimented with this a lot because I don't like noisy things like plastic buckles, but there's ways to get around that too, not to make noise, to cinch these down extremely tight, and that's gonna prevent them from sliding back and forth. It's best to look at the sticks this way rather than on the side. And usually they're on the ground, so you're standing above them, which gives you pretty good leverage for tightening the strap. You want to take this black X that's stitched inside of this carrying strap. What I do at this end is I make this a little bit bigger than it has to be. I'm now going to put my palm on top of this black stitched X that's on top of the top stick. Put it down here, grab the tag end with this hand, in this case it's my left hand, and just pull it tight. When this is pulled tightly, that prevents the sticks from moving back and forth or coming apart, obviously, and that prevents noise. This is not gonna move, but this end's gonna be loose down here, which is why we're gonna tighten it right now, and I'll basically just repeat the process. So really quick, do the same thing. The loop that goes over your shoulder, put that off to the side. Put this black X up on the top stick. Loosen this end with that end of the buckle. That goes underneath. Pinch your fingers in this part right here so that when you buckle it, it doesn't make that plastic on plastic sound. You wanna put your palm that's not holding onto the tag end right on top of this loop and tighten. Now you're all set. You've got this part that goes over your shoulder as we talked about a while ago. You've got this fully clipped in both spots. These are as tight as they can go. It looks loose, like if you pull out, it's gonna look a little loose, but these sticks will not make noise. You can jump up and down, they make no noise whatsoever not any noise so there you have it quiet take your time you don't need to buy other means to carry the sticks in and to keep them quiet and the tighter you pull this the more quiet they're gonna be the grip on top of each step and i will tell you this is great it's something that people might not talk about when reviewing these types of sticks. This is a really good design where these little bits here are angled in, not out, because obviously you don't want your foot to slip off. So when I'm pushing off this way to go around the tree on my ring of steps for saddle hunting, or if you push off the side of this to get onto your stand or to move around or whatever, your foot will not slip. Let's do some pros and cons to conclude this video. Not to end in a negative way, let's start with the bad parts of the sticks and then let's talk about the good functions. So con number one, they're heavy. Almost 12 pounds with the straps. There's a reason why stick manufacturers in the hunting industry advertise their stick weight without their straps. What you saw earlier in the video was that four sticks with their four straps weighed almost 12 pounds. That's a lot of weight for four sticks. If you compare that to other stick manufacturers like the Hawk Helium, Dan Infault, Beast Sticks, Tether just came out with one recently. That's only one pound. Yeah, they're pretty, they're pretty heavy. But for me, that's really heavy and something I wish I would have considered before. But for me, it doesn't matter that much because I have another climbing method that knocks off about four pounds. This is just one of my climbing methods, but not the only way I ascend up and down a tree. 
Con number two, they're noisy if you haven't practiced with them. They're not noisy going up and down a tree necessarily. They're noisy stacking on top of each other and taking them apart. That's a problem. Like I said earlier in the video, if you take your time, you set them down slowly, you clip the buckle slowly, and you do all that, which you should probably do anyway in my opinion, then it's fine. But you have to be extra cautious when using these sticks. Con number three, without the carrying strap, they don't click together. And a lot of sticks on the market have ways that they can stick together. Like the Hawk Helium has like a little suction rubber thing and other ones have clips where they attach together. These ones do attach, but you have to use some kind of strap or bungee cord of your own. They don't come that way. So if you want your sticks to attach to your hang on stand as you're walking in, you need to come up with that solution. Now the good news, pro number one, they're affordable. Now they're not the most expensive, they're not the cheapest, but for four sticks with four straps and the carrying device, you're about $130. That's not bad. I know that some of you are thinking, oh my gosh, $130 to get up a tree. But for the quality you're getting, these things don't break. They fit together extremely well. They're well designed. And it's a great company down in Louisiana that's going to offer you good customer service. $130 to get 16 feet up in a tree without any aiders. That's not a bad price point. If you look at other competitive sticks out there, they start at 130 and become far more expensive. Pro number two, safety. If you're a safety conscious person, if a person at home is worried about you being safe out in the woods when you're hunting, these are a pretty good stick option. The grip on each step on the sticks is very, very good. Your chances of slipping are minimal. They are extremely safe climbing up and down the tree. They stick really well. Sometimes I've only had three points of contact where they engage the tree bark and one's hanging off. That didn't change anything. It never slipped, it never went up and down. It moves initially when you put your weight on it, but it goes down about an inch, but all sticks are going to do that. These are very, very safe sticks, nice wide double steps. So if safety is something you're concerned about, purchasing these sticks will help take that away a little bit and you won't have to worry so much about climbing up and down the tree and feeling unsafe. Pro number three, this is for saddle hunters only. When you have these sticks hanging on your lower back, and you have a small backpack above it and all you have on is your saddle or maybe not even a backpack up here, you can move in and out of cover very easily. I don't bump these sticks on anything walking in and out of the woods, which was a huge concern for me when looking into sticks before the season started. When I walk into thick cover, these sticks are not hitting brush and not bumping into trees and creating unnecessary noise. Especially for the weight, we talked about a con being the weight, almost 12 pounds. I thought, oh my gosh, that's a lot of weight to carry in the woods for four sticks. But the way that I had them positioned on my lower back, for saddle hunters especially, this is a huge pro because if you're trying to lessen your cumbersome nature and in walking into the woods by not having a hang-on stand hanging on your back, which is why a lot of people choose to saddle hunt to begin with, this is a really nice option for you. That's gonna conclude this video. Thank you so much for watching and supporting this channel. I just got started. I don't know why I didn't start doing this years ago, but hey, I really appreciate your support. If you can think of anything that I missed in this video, please let me know. It's really, really easy to miss something or forget something when doing these videos, so please keep that in mind. Put it down in the comments below. You can also write me an email. I'm more than happy to respond. Take care until next time and stay safe out there.